everybody, so welcome to this month's training for the Underground Agency Academy. And this month, our specific topic we're covering is email marketing. So we're going to go through a few different things here, and then I'll have some resources that um, uh, you see below, but I'll show you kind of what they are and, and tell you where to use them. So the first thing I want to talk about is why. Why email marketing? So really, I equivalent this to uh, almost the direct mail of 20, 25 years ago. Um, you know, it was something that was popular used, but the difference now is email marketing has really no cost to you. And that's uh, one of the biggest things is, uh, you know, in my business, your business, everybody's business, your email list can be everything, right? But if you just willy-nilly throw out emails that are vague and, you know, there are certain connotations to them, it's just not going to work. So what I want to go through today is exactly how we're going to format a great marketing email. Uh, really, we're going to get into some intricate details, stuff that you might not think seems important, but aesthetically, it really is if you want to get some response from your email. Um, and then also, we're going to go through some templates that I'm going to attach here for you. You should see the links on the bottom of the video or on the page somewhere. I got to see where I'm going to put them. Should be on the bottom. Uh, and then really, your strategy going forward. All right, so when we think email marketing, we gotta first of all realize there's uh, different purposes to each email. So maybe one email is you want a direct quote, a direct lead, right? And that could be to prospects or current clients you're trying to cross sell. Uh, other type of emails are really just information and full of content, which really you're gonna follow a similar rule that you would with social media, kind of an 80-20 split. So 80% of your email should contain content, so whether that content is a job aid for the client, a video, an education piece, um, you know, some happenings going on, if you're going to be at an event, it's really, think of that as not sales, right? We're just delivering content because we want people to be engaged. So then when we do deliver that sales product email or the quote email, they'll be um, really more willing to open the email up and then click and proceed through to whatever we want them to do. All right, so first and foremost, we have to understand the purpose of our email. Is it, are you looking at a content-driven email? Uh, we're getting leads, a direct sale. You know, that's the first thing we got to determine. All right, and then once we determine that, the first, very first thing that you need to look at is your subject line. Okay, so I'm going to kind of write as we go here. All right, so the subject line is really important just because, you know, it, without that, if that's not good, people aren't going to open the email. All right, so what are some keys to subject lines? So the first and foremost, uh, it needs to be intriguing, right? They need to see it as something they are more curious about. A lot of what's popular right now, and you can even test this yourself. If you go through, we all get hundreds of emails, but if you go through your emails and you think of the ones that catch your attention, they're probably going to fall in some of these categories. So one thing people like, especially if we're talking content emails, are lists. Lists are big, and so let's say you could do a list, uh, and I'm just going to think off the top of my head here, uh, top five ways to save money in your car insurance, just an example. That, your subject line would be just that, all right? Top five ways to save, and make it short as you can, so maybe in this case dollar signs, on car insurance. All right, and that's just an example. Obviously, there's a ton of more probably interesting ones you can come up with, but if we're looking at pure content, um, that's one that's really big right now. Let's say you're looking for uh, educational pieces. So you maybe attached a video, all right, or a video or a resource, okay? Whenever you do something like that, you have an attachment of content of some sort, whatever the subject line is before that, what I want you to put in parentheses or brackets is either video enclosed, and you'll see this on a lot of mine that you get from me. Video enclosed, or resource enclosed, right? Something of that nature. Uh, the other thing I'm gonna include, and uh, it'll be down at the bottom, is uh, really like, probably 100 or so good subject lines. Now granted, they might not all apply to your business or your agency, but you can see how you can doctor it up to make it work. So. Subject line is super, super important. I just gotta grab my eraser. All right, so that's the first thing we have to do. It's kinda, if you picture it in the direct mail world, all right, what's gonna get more opens in direct mail? Is it gonna be just a letter white envelope or is it gonna be a full packet, right? A brown envelope handwritten. So that's what we gotta think on the subject line is if that's not good, if that's not as perfect as we can possibly make it, it's not getting open. 
All right, so let's talk about inside the email. So first and foremost, this is where aesthetics come in. Uh, and by aesthetics, I mean the look of it, the feel of it, what makes people want to read and read more. And so what we look at here, and like I said, some of this stuff might seem minute, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. So first and foremost, the last thing you want on any email is just paragraphs, right? Because that's not pleasing to the eyes. People get overwhelmed. They don't want to read it. Let's face it, whether we want to admit it or not, especially an email, we're lazy when it comes to reading. All right, so what we gotta make sure to do is make it aesthetically pleasing, and so a couple ways we do that. So every email you see me send to you, I generally will put just one or two lines per space, and then each time, I'm just gonna write, pretend that's my sentence here, right? And then after each sentence, I put dot, dot, dot. And the reason I do that is the subconscious, when they see dot, 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 that leads them to the next point, right? Like the thought's not finished yet, so they're gonna keep moving and reading down, all right? And so, you know, I might have two lines, right? Couple lines, and then dot, 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 and then if it's a question, I'll put a question mark, explanation, whatever. Um, you know, so that's the first thing. So every time you do a line or two in that dot, 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 then you wanna do a space, okay? So at the end of the email, you're gonna have something like this, I just don't want to take the time to write out full sentences here. But you'll see there's spacing between the thoughts. All right. So that's the first thing we got to do is the spacing and uh, how much you're putting on one line is very important because we want people to not be lazy. We want their eyes to, to catch whatever we're throwing out there. So that's going to make them read it. The next thing is uh, your email most likely when you write is going to default to an 11 font or a 12 font. So now what I want to show you is every email should have a couple of things when it comes to the font. And number one is, and I know it varies, but depending on each email server, but you want either a 16 font or an 18, depending on how big it is. And also, you know, if you're doing, like you'll see my emails, if I'm doing a page and like there's, there's seven or eight different lines and thoughts, that's gonna be a 16 font. If I have a shorter email where it's only gonna be three or four lines, I'll do an 18, right? Because I don't want the page to keep scrolling and scrolling. So really it depends, but you need at least have 16, possibly even 18 font. The other thing is the entire email needs to be bold. Right? The entire email needs to be bold because it, it all is going to stick out. And that bold facing, what will end up happening is that also will make it easier to read, believe it or not. Um, now, people ask me about text. You can vary that. Um, you know, I generally will try to stay right around Arial. Um, you know, I guess there's, there's some other ones around there that you can. Don't go with things like Courier New uh, unless you're trying to present like a, a newspaper feeling. Uh, which is rare. Unless you're doing like a newsletter, then you might be able to get away with like a carrier new. Don't do any crazy fonts. Don't, you know, don't do like the balloon fonts or the cartoon fonts or anything like that. You want to stick right around the Arial. Cambria is another one that's that's a good font style. So any of those work. Just, you know, don't get too crazy with it. All right, so 16 or 18 font. We want it bold. And then we also need key points to be underlined. All right, underlined or italicized. Now, of course, if you're inputting a link anywhere, that'll automatically be underlined, which is fine. But in uh, underline or italics, will help go ahead and point people into the exact thoughts that you want to focus on. All right, so we got to keep that in mind too. Uh, the other thing I like doing, and not everybody does, and I, I don't do it for every single email, but I will add. If it's a point I want to make, and maybe a list even that I'm putting out there, I'll put the list in color. All right, so you know I have my my regular email subject, and let's say it's a list of the top five, whatever, and then the list will be in a different color. Uh, don't use red; I just have that colored marker here. So I get often asked, "What are the best colors to use when it comes to email marketing?" Um, so there's a few. All right, so, and I apologize because I don't have all these colors and markers, so it's going to look a little weird because I'm going to write the colors all in blue. Um, so let's look at some of the best converting colors. All right, so best converting colors. Best, you are going to have blue. All right, another good one is orange. And a middle of the road green. All right. Uh, also, if you can do like a dark gold sometimes, dark gold's a good font color uh, as well. All right, and now with the best, we gotta look at the worst, okay? 
So worst, red. Red is to be used very carefully, because if you use red, you're shouting out something, right? And red just subconsciously can have a negative connotation, not always, but sometimes. So red's not good. Uh, stay away from your neons, obviously. We want to make sure they can read it. And super light colors. You know, other ones that don't work well as part of the red family, like pink. Uh, and other ones, too, depending on what you do, I've used dark purple before. Light purple, I don't, you don't really get a, a good response off of, so it doesn't, it just looks weird. The biggest thing with all of this, though, guys, is at the end of the email, obviously you want to proofread it, but look it all over, okay? Look at it as if you were reading the email and see if it's aesthetically pleasing to you. All right, so that's, that's the big thing. Uh, the other thing, too, I mentioned a little bit earlier that we want to put links in. And that's a rule. Any email you have, I don't care if it's a content email, uh, a pure sales email, lead generation email, you need to have at least three links throughout the email. And this could be links to your website, your Facebook page, whatever content you're providing. Uh, if it is a sales or lead type of generation email, then that can get navigated to wherever you want them to input their information. But no matter what, we want at least three links. Now, sometimes these links can be the same thing, all three. Other times it could be three separate links, two of the same, whatever the combination. You want three separate links. And then add, um, you know, at the end, was what I like to do, is add a picture. So if you have an agency logo or a picture yourself, add that but make sure to link it back to something else too so we want at least whoops sorry doing this all on the fly here at least three links picture with link and then do a different type of tagline don't do sincerely yours or you know regards all right so uh, and you can steal this if you want to or think of your own my emails always end my salutation uh, is always great success, Joe Davis. All right, and that just, you know, something positive. You know, some people I've seen make it a great day or, or something of that nature. So, you know, make that unique, make that yours, make it positive so it just kind of sticks with them because if it's sincerely regards, you know, that's just white noise in email marketing. They see that all day, every day. Um, you know, so those are some really helpful tips when it comes to setting up your email and the aesthetics of it. Now, what I've also done, as I mentioned, we're gonna put templates out here. Feel free to use them, change them up, do whatever you wanna do. The one thing I wanna make sure you understand, though, is an email marketing campaign is not gonna be super successful and have longevity until you put your own personality into it. So using my templates to start, absolutely fine. I would definitely encourage and recommend you to start thinking of your own. All right, and so really just treat it like a conversation. I know a lot of people get caught up in, you know, you need to be super professional, which is good to be professional, but you want to have a conversation with this person. All right, you want to show them you're a human being. Uh, and as much as we might mass market and bulk these emails, they got to feel personal to each individual. All right, so, you know, if you have a coder in your email where you can put the client's first name and it works, do that. If not, you know, just start with a good afternoon, good morning, happy Wednesday, happy Monday, whatever. Um, you know, we just want to make sure that it feels personal, even though it's going to be a bulk email. All right. So, guys, hit me up if you have any questions on this. Joe and I with Davis.com. You're going to see those resources below on the page. If you have questions on those, let me know. Other than that, that is email marketing for this month. Our next month, we're actually going to go through um, what, I, what, what are called funnels. So we're going to talk about websites, funnels, how to build it, what they're about, the reason, all that good stuff. So uh, any questions, hit me up, Joe and I'm with Davis.com. Other than that, guys, great success with your email marketing campaign, and I will talk to you later. Bye.